All right, let's reprise from where we left off. Ah, you fucking idiots! If only someone, if only someone had told you sooner not to pick up the phone. Oh wait, me. I mean, okay. To be fair, reaction time can only be so quick, Wibs. That's not really his fault as much. There you go. The the assassin that was actually sent to kill Born in Paris is actually called Rurik. So we have uh, first the boss fight against him no? in the apartment. It's like a boxing match. Very, very much. Well, all the while Frank and Potente just well, stands there doing nothing. Not exactly a boxing match, but more like a. I guess of anything. Well, I mean, these two are. Well, I mean, to be fair, Tio, these two are trained, highly trained um, fighters. What, what, okay. what can she do? I forgot the details, but if I remember correctly, she did something in the movie. Like a, like a surprise stab or something. To be fair, at this angle where she's at, she wouldn't be able to get a surprise attack in. And common sense would dictate not to get in the middle of that fight in particular, given how intense it is. But uh, to, to answer quickly something that Blibs was mentioning at the end of the previous part, uh, I think the reason why, it, at least that's what I believe, the um, critics tend to be more scrutinizing towards, uh, you know, the 007 franchise when it's in competition. I suppose it's because usually it's done against maybe like a newborn kind of franchise where you want to see, potent, you know, the potential you're going while Bond, uh, you know, as an established legacy behind uh, potentially to be compared to. I don't really think that's a thing, given how the MCU never really suffers that in that regard. Like, honestly, I would just chalk it up more so to the fact that Bond's film's qualities compared to the competition weren't the best that year with each of those movies. Not to say they were bad, but they were like, you know, the weaker ones. Yeah, in terms of film quality, yes, I can see that. Um, but in terms <laughs> of film quality, um... The Bond series, you know, has been kind of all over the place. Like we it have, has been, yeah. like, like say, take the highs and lows of each era. I love like just... Connery, like for his high note, Connery has um, Goldfinger, but as a low note, um, he has Diamonds of Forever, where it looks like he's not even trying anymore. That's so amazing. basically, doesn't count. He only had one movie. Um, Roger Moore. Yeah, his highs and stuff like The Spy Who Loved Me, a, um, a a tale of how two sides could work together for a common for a common aim. Uh, the downside is uh, a view to a kill, where, um, where by that point Roger had to be uh, Roger Moore had to um, lean on somebody just to stand up, never mind do an action scene. So what about say with Pierce Brosnan and Daniel Craig? Um, well, I mean, Dalton, okay, I won't count Dalton since he only had two movies, um, which is unfortunate. Um, so one was his best Brosnan, and the other was his worst. I, I prefer Living Daylights over License to Kill. I mean, neither are, both are pretty good films, All right, I just prefer Living go. Daylights, but I'll, I'll finish off after this bit's finished. Oh, that's gotta hurt. Maybe I can get a drunk, you moron! What wasn't conveyed is that he was shot, and the guy just yeets himself like in the movie in the room of the window. Don't look. These people know who I am. Still a better henchman who yeets himself away than the ones in the recent My Hero Academia film. <laughs> Seriously, they show up three times. Are completely ineffective and at their jobs that they die. Remember how in the movie it kind of took a bit of time for the characterization between Bourne and Franco Potente's character to the point where at this moment he needed to actually make sure she was in. Again, the the video game doesn't spend too much time in terms of actual cutscene because it's more focused on the action more than anything. But yeah, now we're basically recreating the, the chase scene from. Um, from the movie in Paris, uh, meaning that we're gonna actually spend quite a bit of time in this car, so continue, Dreams. Uh, Brosnan, um, his high point was Goldeneye, a movie that proved that even without the Cold War as a backdrop, Bond as a franchise could still be relevant given the effort. Mm -hmm. 
died of a day was his, was his low point. Although I'd argue, well, there's not enough, isn't that much better. Um, but in Dying of a Day's case, um, it proved that, um, that while you can be too serious, you can also be too, be too silly. Yeah, if you're too serious, people think your film's boring. If it's too stupid, if it's too silly, people just write it off as just being stupid. And then not, not to mention the awful CGI and, um, and everything else. Um, uh, Daniel Craig, um, his high point was uh, Skyfall, a good marriage of the uh, of the different eras. You know, and some more silly stuff, but some also a lot more serious stuff from his era. Uh, low point, Quantum of Solace, where um, that really was a Jason Bourne ripoff, down to the camera work. Really, and and proof that just because you're short, seriously, but it's not even it's 106 minutes that film. Dang. Just because yeah. you're just because you're short. Don't mean you can't be a slog to get through. So, and yes, James, I feel that guilty. a James Bond movie tr literally trying to be Jason Bourne. That sounds like a recipe that could either re result in something amazing or just something absolutely terrible. Yeah, that's the thing, Joe. It can't even do Bourne right. Um, I mean, Mark Forster is a decent director, but he is not an action director. Seriously, he can't shoot action to save his life. There's way too many quick cuts, there's way too many close-up shots. And that's the baffling thing. The actors in it are capable of fighting, like Daniel Craig, for example. So it's like but, that... Oh. But, I mean, but then we get stuff like that terrible elevator fight. It only lasts five seconds, but it still manages to pack in what was wrong with action movies at that time. So it's like when Universal tried to have Ang Lee of all people direct a Hulk movie. Like, just, no, absolute wrong style of director. Also, um, I forgot to leave, so I, okay, it's probably a detail, so I'm not, uh, I, that's why also I'm not remembering myself, but uh, did they use a beanie to escape even in the movie? What movie? The, the, the first of Jason Bourne movie, for Identity. I don't remember that one. Because I mean, again, it's interesting advertisement, uh, suppose. Uh. It's very, it's very rare and hard. Like it's, because of the fact that it's so hard, it's very rare to see a filmmaker be able to make the full transition uh, like that. I mean, with Christopher Nolan, remember before he directed Batman Begins, he directed only character-driven um, psychological thrillers. So he was, uh, so he wasn't. Uh, uh, so when people announced him as the director of the new Batman movie, they pe people were immediately like, hmm. Okay, the psychological aspect of Batman, definitely, but is he good at action? Uh, uh, the Batman Begins action was just okay, but fortunately he improved for The Dark Knight and so on and so forth. So. Mind you, mind you, mind you. I'm not completely go. against the idea of someone stepping outside their comfort zone, because as the old saying goes, we gotta start somewhere with some things. That being said, there are just some cases where someone is clearly entrenched in their comfort zone, and maybe this big important project is not the best time for them to have their yeah. go at it, per se. Like, yes, by all means, Good. give a test here and there, but make sure it's a movie that you know is worth being tested on. Like, you know, mm, okay. Sure, sure get... Sorry. Like, for Sorry. example, um, like you said with Batman Begins, while Christopher Nolan wasn't big on action, he still did have the psychological stuff to fall back on. So the action could be used somewhat in transition. Mind you, would have rather it have been better, but still, it did at least accumulate to the point where he could make great action with Dark Knight. Like, if you really I don't do... think... I don't think the... So what you're saying, Trevor, is, is the best time to try an experiment isn't really a follow-up to Casino Royale. <laughs> Oh. Also, it's not... okay, okay, okay. Sorry, I'm curious. Gonna... How unexperienced was the director with this uh, style of direction for that movie, Dwibs? Um, put it this way, Joe. But one of his films, he'd be basically he'd be making films like Finding Neverland. Yeah. Okay. Good movie, but that is definitely not one you go to for action. That's like a character study with very slow pace and you know about quiet uh, moments. So... Seriously, it is. Mark Forster's thing was, and is to this day still, uh, either dramas or thrillers, um, or even like comedy thrillers, like Stranger Than Fiction, and uh, and you know, dramas like stuff like The Kite Runner and stuff. 
Quantum of Souls was his first action movie. Um, okay, uh, that's, that's the thing. Not only did he direct the action poorly, the drama wasn't even that good. It's just basically the, the, the main crux of the film is supposedly okay. Bond trying to get over, uh, trying to come to terms with the death of Vesper from the previous movie. And half the time, the film kind of forgets that. So is the PS3 version of this game really this bad, or is your PS3 dying? Because we keep having low t pauses for loading times. Like No, those those, like, those those keep happening. I get the idea we're just loading different parts of a city. Okay, Again, okay. Right, I'll, I'll, okay, I will get... Sorry. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Uh, if two? you couldn't really do this entire thing without load times, yeah, you probably should have, um, you I, know... Uh, it, they don't really seem too much of a problem to me, to be honest. Especially considering the rest, the entire sequence uh, actually doesn't really have frame rate drops to begin with. To I me, have, that's more impressive than anything for I'm, a game I'm, from base time. I have to agree with you. Well, I'm not really seeing pauses for load times or anything. No, now, no, no, there are, no, no, actually, no, Jova, there are. But to me, they're not really much of a problem. Oh, oh, you mean those segments? Like, I mean, because those feel... Yeah. Those I don't feel... think about frame rates. I don't think about... It's more so the fact that, you know, like, I feel like they went, they went a bit too over-ambitious with the big, wide-open area if they couldn't have it be entirely seamless with no load times. I feel uh, like they, could, they probably could have... Yeah, know. honestly, I feel like the segments where there are load times are far and few enough between that it doesn't feel too intrusive. So that's gonna say, I really do compliment how open this is. Uh, Tio, are you allowed to take multiple routes on the escape? No, 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 okay, it's very so it's linear. Again, there are, you can also check on the minimap map the route you're supposed to take, but again... I will give um, them credit, the way that they do simulate just how crazy a car chase can be in a boring film is As far as I awesome. know, your car is invincible. I, I tried, I, as you can see, I smashed through everything and I didn't, aside from some smoke, I don't really have noticed like an health bar or anything. So oh. to get the idea, I actually do wonder if it was a case where some testing showcased that giving, you know, your an help to actually be worried about might have been too much of an asshole. So they yeah. decide to actually cut to cut some corners on I, that. I do love how cheeky the game is with how you... Like, you would think that, the, that this was Motor Tune Grand Prix with the locations you go to inside hotels. And even with a, a sophisticated shop, uh, classic music. And yes, literally a china shop that just smashed through. All the while, Frank and Potente keep screaming her lungs. Which, Seriously, it's like... Um, I'm half expecting... Jason! <laughs> the, 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 the only thing this, this week would be more complete, like a sitcom driving scene. It's like if Bourne drove through a shop, hit tables and scared people, and he's like, sorry! <laughs> oh, the thing... But yeah, no, the thing is, like, uh, remember, that's the thing, Jova. Uh, after finishing his 2002 movie Insomnia, he actually pitched Inception to Warner Brothers right there and then, and he got in Greenlit. Thing is, he needed more experience directing action movies um, before he could properly make that movie happen. So he, okay, I have to make something else. What else? Oh, they're looking for a way to reboot Batman. Well, I'm actually a Batman okay. fan, so. So what oh, you're sure, saying I'll... is that the Batman Dark Knight trilogy, well, okay, to be fair, the first two movies, but still, you're telling me that the Batman movies were actually part of his long antiquated plan to make Inception? It's because, um, uh, even though Warner Brothers greenlit the movie, he realized that he wouldn't be able to do the, uh, the the elaborate action sequences of that movie because he had no experience with action movies. So obviously he needed to gain experience, right? He also knew that Warner Brothers was looking into rebooting Batman. And since he, re and since he was a fan of the character, he decided to pitch his idea of, okay, if, if I'm uh, my idea is, would be to reboot The Dark Knight and use Frank Miller's um, Year one. take on the character as the basis. Yeah. Mm, but, yeah. Um, so. I will say this though. It reminds me of how the Hercules movie technically only exists because that was the creators' um, deal with Disney. Make Hercules, and they'd be allowed to make their passion yeah. project, Treasure Planet. But, but remember, Jova, the previous Batman movie was Batman and Robin, so obviously Christopher <laughs> wasn't exactly feeling a lot of pressure. To get it right, you know. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, like, like how like, hard it would like, be to live up to the brilliance of yeah. Batman and Robin. Yeah, put it, put it this way, put it this way. He could have, the first one could have been on par with the Dark Knight Rises, and this one would have been better. 
probably, yeah. yeah. Probably. Honestly, honestly, at that stage, something like the Dark Knight Rises would have been met with open arms after Batman and Robin. It's the same right. situation that uh, John Watts is living right now. When not, you know, after finishing the home trilogy for the MCU, now he's going to be the one rebooting the Fantastic Four. Again, after Fantastic, he's probably feeling no pressure at all. <laughs> also, so, that, that, that guy that we've mentioned during our, you know, V Predator, Commentary the one with his directing skulls. Oh, wait, now the car suddenly is damaged. Well, to be fair, it kind of was on the front, it just did not showcase. It just meant he apparently it was invincible still. Yeah. I gotta say, from, the, from what I've heard of the premise, skulls sound like what the Terminator movie should have been after, too. Just like anthology movies taking place at different times. Mm hmm. hmm. All right, what's Jason's big idea? Oh boy, surrender. No. No. Yeah, see, it's the it's the, it's these pauses that I'm talking about. Seriously. I mean, I mean, fake surrender. Okay, I'm gonna give him credit. Lower budget than probably what they were hoping to work with. And yeah, that, okay. that is a favorite idea invention. And again, this was literally the second game that uh, that the team developed. Uh, I'm so. gonna give it a pass because the set piece is still fun enough and right, thankfully so isn't got constantly it. interrupted by it. You can never come back oh, it's this. Uh, okay. Yes, I can. We should change your hair. They know what you look like now. Yeah, again, see what I mean with the game going fast through this? Now we're immediately cutting to the scene where he cuts her hair and they ended up having sex from the movie. Like... Again, um, if you've seen the movie and everything, this is more natural than anything. But if this is your first born experience, this is a bit of tad schizophrenic. <laughs> Whoa! Was it good for was... you? I mean, I guess that... they're trying to do the Bond thing, where you know, like um... remember, Gleeves, the movie kind of was like that, but we kind of had time to work on uh, on this. Uh, anyway. Think... Tune in the next part, uh, where Bourne has his last uh, flashback, so we see the last of the past, uh, you know, uh, missions uh, that he did before the one where he was supposed to kill Wondozi. I'll save for that. See ya. See ya.